Vlogmas day eight. And it's actually full sun for the first time all week. I just went outside to film that little thing and it's cold. The downside to having a clear sky is that it's a lot colder. It was one degree this morning when we got up. So, uh, yeah, we'll wrap up warm for our walk today. So this is a good old fashioned paper map of Victoria. And we are staying right here on Fisgard Street. So yesterday we crossed this bridge. It's a lifting bridge. It can be raised to allow boats to go underneath. And we just caught a glimpse of it finishing that the other day. It'd be really cool to watch the whole process, but we haven't seen it so far. And we did the Songi walkway, which is all the way along here. And I think we turned around here. So that took us an hour each way. It doesn't look far, but it felt far. So what we're proposing to do today is we'll leave our apartment, we'll cross the bridge again, and then we'll do the Galloping Goose Trail, which goes this way. And it looks like it's really long because it extends all the way up for a very, very, very long way. So we will probably probably get as far as the Selkirk trestle. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping we get at least to the Selkirk trestle before we get to the point where we want to turn around. And hopefully at some point we'll find a nice coffee shop for a rest and a snack. a pretty view. We're headed back towards downtown now. We found a coffee shop to have a tea and a cookie and a bee. We did about 7,000 steps and 72 minutes of walking at that point. And now we're headed back. We saw two seals in the harbour from the bridge that we crossed earlier. I did try and get some film of them, but it would have been hard to see them with the reflections on the water, so I don't know if it worked out. Okay, so I think I figured out where we went to today. We started right here. We went across the bridge this way the Galloping Goose Trail. We crossed the Selkirk Trestle. And then we carried on. And then as we're sort of at this point where we have Highway 1 on our right hand side, it was like, oh, I think I fancy a cup of tea or something, you know, have a bit of a break. And so we did a bit of Googling and my husband was like, Oh yeah, this roundhouse coffee shop is only three minutes away. <laughs> so we're in this uptown area here and we're like, oh, three minutes walk. Okay, I can do that. No, <laughs> apparently it was three minute drive. It was more like a 15 minute walk. Anyway, we were up 
around here somewhere I have no idea exactly where in here we were but there was a coffee shop where we had tea and a cookie and then we managed to get back on the galloping goose trail and come back the same way we went all the way back to here and then we had lunch at Green Cuisine and oh my goodness my right heel's killing me from the plantar fasciitis which I haven't had in a while till this week when it flared up again and the uh, left hip's sore even my husband's complaining a bit of soreness today so when we got back we popped down Fantan Alley which is out here somewhere it's somewhere between Pandora and Fisgard. Hmm, it's not showing Pandora on this map. But Fantan Alley comes out on Fisgard. It's probably around here. And uh, we popped into Salt Spring Soapworks and bought a couple of bath bombs. His is a cedar smelling one and mine is a orange vanilla. So he had the amazingly good idea that we should buy bath bombs so that we can both have a good hot soak in a bath later on. I approve. It would actually be rather nice to have a south-facing apartment today so that we could sit in the sun while we're out on our balcony because it's pretty chilly in the shade still even though it's been a beautiful sunny day. I just made the mistake of looking through the glass balcony down at the road and got a touch of vertigo. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that. Tell me what you think. Do you get vertigo when you're looking down like that? And it's like, oh, that's a long way down. And once again, the kettle goes on for another cup of tea. These Thai food tea bags haven't been too bad. I might have to take these home with me because I don't want to see them go to waste. But this bag here, still unsealed. So what I should probably do is just leave it behind and somebody can use it. Mr. Stitches is having a calm chamomile. He doesn't drink black tea. He drinks green tea or herbal. Never coffee. That's a pretty colour kettle. My favourite colour, it's that turquoise, isn't it? I feel like I want to snatch it and take it home. Well, I'm even more sore now. We, we worked out what we needed to have in the place for tonight's light dinner. <clears throat> which is basically just bread and sandwich fillings. That's fine. We have enough oat milk left to put in my tea. Uh, but we have a whole pot of yogurt, like I'm talking a big pot of yogurt that we haven't even started yet. So it's going to be breakfast. And we went out to see if we could find some ripe enough bananas earlier and my husband was like oh yeah we just go down to one of those Chinese markets just up the road <laughs> well no they have some great exotic vegetables in there but the only bananas we could see were pretty green so then we went another block further and went to the Victoria public market but it's all um, food court type places where they're just selling ready-made meals that sort of thing or oh, ones that you order no fresh produce so i said okay it looks like we're going to the save on so <clears throat> that was another couple of blocks further on 
and all the, all the way my joints are starting to tell me, you really want to sit down, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> that part of Pandora where the Save on Foods is, it's kind of sad, actually. There's obviously a place there that helps out street people. And it's become quite a tense city around there. There's a lot of tents pitched either side of a main city road. And there's lots and lots of people milling around there who are homeless and, yeah, down on their luck. And it's disturbing and sad. And whilst I know there's a lot of people who don't even want to live in an actual house because of the, their mental state or their past or their trauma, they don't want to or they're not able to live in a building. But I feel that in a perfect world, there would be no such thing as homelessness. Yeah, it's hard to see, especially around Christmas, I suppose, when we're all just overeating, overspending, staying warm inside when we want to. We've got roofs over our head and enough food in the fridge for days on end. All of which is to say we hit around 18,000 steps today. Mr. Stitches is currently in the bath soaking some of the stresses and strains of the day away. <laughs> stresses and strains. After what I just said about homeless people, that sounds really privileged. And then... When he comes out and I've had my cup of tea, I'll go and have my turn. Fizz up my orange bath bomb. This is our last evening here. We are flying tomorrow morning pretty early. We have to get out of this place really early. And so I have gone through my handbag and taken out anything that's a liquid or my Swiss Army knife and anything like that. And I have put it into my main suitcase. In fact, because the strap broke on my denim bag that I was using as a backpack slash handbag, I've basically put that in the suitcase as well. And I'm just using a supermarket tote bag for my essentials. Very sexy. It is black, so it does coordinate with my outfit. I've got the black coat, the black jeans, and the black boots. Very sexy superstore shopping bag as my purse. <laughs> this kettle is so weird. It just sits on the uh, electric stove here. And for a long, long time, you think, did I remember to turn the heat on? And then suddenly it makes a noise and then starts to whistle because it's boiling. So you saw the um, embroidery earlier. I just gave you a quick flash of the embroidery. I'll have to iron it when I get home and follow the instructions for uh, putting it into its little frame and it'll be all done. I didn't mention yesterday, but we went to a place called, I think it was Button and Needlework. It's down on View Street and it was one that we passed last Sunday, but they were closed. And it's a lovely store. They have cross stitch kits and they have lots of beads and yarn and knitting books and crochet books. Well, I assume crochet books. I don't remember seeing any. But it was a lovely little store down a really cute little alley, as they often are. I didn't buy anything. I could have bought a cross stitch kit, but it probably would have been a bookmark or a pin cushion kit or something like that. And I don't think I'd use a bookmark. I probably would use a pin cushion, but, or maybe not. I usually just have my pins in a little plastic box by the side of my sewing machine. So I have looked on, online for cross-stitch kits. I did look at Hirschners.com. They had some. Quite a, quite a lot of Christmas things. 
One company I noticed has some really lovely designs was called Bothy Threads. Can't say that with my braces in. Bothy, B-O-T-H-Y. So I thought, as they're from the UK, I would compare the price with Woolhead. Well, oh God, I can't talk. I compared the price with Wool Warehouse in the UK and doing the exchange rate from pounds to Canadian and US dollars to Canadian. It worked out a little less to get them from Wool Warehouse and I know that their shipping charges are really reasonable. So I think I will have to go back and browse Wool Warehouse a little more because the Bothy Threads ones are really cute and get myself another cross stitch kit or two because I really, really enjoyed doing that little Christmas wiener dog. So before this kettle decides to whistle its little head off, I shall wind up Vlogmas day eight. Day eight. I remembered it was day eight today because it's my brother-in-law's birthday today. My husband is one of three boys and their birthdays are all December 8th and 9th. So the oldest brother, December 8th, and the middle and youngest, December 9th. And they're all two years apart, almost to the day. And so his oldest brother got a phone call this morning to wish him happy birthday. And yeah, he's 67 now. It's hard to imagine. I've known him since he was in his 20s. Wow. Okay, then, this thing's about to uh, whistle, so I will sign off and say thanks again for watching. Tomorrow is flying back home day, and I'm really looking forward to being back home again. I will miss this place, though. It's been a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.